Calling the roll, Ms. Conwell. Here. Mr. Gallagher, Mr. Gallagher is absent. Mr. Germana. Here. Mr. Miller. Here. Ms. Brown. Here. We have a quorum, and I'd like the record to reflect that Mr. Hairston is in attendance. All right, welcome. Um, if we, uh, I'll make a motion to excuse uh, Councilman Gallagher from the meeting. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Councilman Gallagher is excused. Um, is there anyone signed in for public comment related to the agenda? No, Madam Chair, no one has signed in. All right, I would like someone to make a motion to approve the minutes from the February 17th meeting. I'll make that motion. All right, is there a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Minutes have been approved from February 17th. And I do believe that was the stop loss uh, insurance and you, I was I abstained because I wasn't here for that meeting I don't believe um, could you read the first um, item into the record please resolution 2015-0037 a resolution approving the reappointment of Thomas L. Koaluka to serve on the Cuyahoga County Personnel Review Commission for the term 3-8-2015 through 3-7-2021 and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective Thank you. Uh, the county charter uh, section 9.01 states that the county council shall appoint the members of the personnel review commission consisting of three electors of the county having experience in personnel matters or personnel administration and who are supportive of equal opportunity considerations. Um, this morning uh, we will be hearing from Mr. Uh, Thomas Koaluka if he could come up please for us. Mr. Koaluka has been a member of uh, the Personnel Review Commission in the past. I believe it was a short term that he was appointed to, and he has done such great outstanding work. So we wanted to uh, afford him the opportunity to share with this committee today um, why he would like to continue. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, is that on now? Okay, yes, I'm sorry. it is. Um, I was appointed, as, as the chairman said, uh, uh, for a year's appointment to serve an unexpired term. Uh, this year, I became the chairman of, of, of the uh, Personnel Review Commission. And I've had the pleasure to serve on that commission with uh, two excellent uh, commissioners, uh, and Ms. Kate, Catherine Walsh and Mr. Rob Wolf, and now Ms. Deborah Sutherland. Um, all are committed to the uh, charter, uh, uh, the, the charter which states that the Personnel Review Commission is to ensure a system of fairness for mer merit and fitness for all employees in the, in the county. The, the Personnel Review Commission in the last year has worked very hard to implement uh, that, that directive. Uh, they have, as the council is well aware, they have implemented, we have implemented a, uh, an equity pay study uh, by an outside uh, group called Gallagher, which we hope to be meeting with you uh, to, in, to develop uh, ways and uh, methods of implementing that study. We think it goes a long way to uh, correcting some of the past abuses uh, that existed within the county and develop the county into a more fair, fair uh, system based on merit and fitness, and, and which is also um, corresponds with other public entities and how they deal with their employees as far as hiring and promotions. Not an easy thing because uh, it, in con contradistinction to the, uh, the private sector, uh, there's budget constraints. And you just cannot automatically give somebody a raise because they've been here for so many years or because you may think they may deserve it even though they do, there's budget constraints. So the, the challenge is to develop a system that is fair to the employees uh, of the county as well as taking into account uh, the, the budget constraints that are put, put upon the executive and, and council. Uh, we uh, strive on, on that basis to work uh, in cooperation with council and the executive to achieve those goals. We believe that all three entities have to work together as a single unit to, to accomplish that single purpose so it will never be done. Um, we, during the past year, 
uh, not only have we developed a pay equity study, but we expanded our uh, the classification system. Uh, we have developed closer relationships with the department personnel. We have developed a testing program uh, that is quite extensive for bringing people into the county that, that, that are qualified. We have efficiently disposed of disciplinary cases uh, on our appeal process, but not only that, uh, the, the, the commission has also worked hard to deal with pay audit, which is sometimes a very difficult uh, area to deal with. And that's when an employee who believes they're not getting paid fairly can demand an audit. And those audits then go through a hearing process in which we uh, review that. And I think that, that, that they've been, they have uh, uh, resulted in a more fair uh, structure for some of the employees who were not being paid uh, according to the, their skills. Uh, we uh, also um, have developed, and I, and I believe, a, a close relationship with council. And we're working hand in glove with council to develop these programs and to keep them abreast of what's going on. Uh, it is the um, we would like to I would like to continue this, um, and I recognize the time commitments because as chairman I've been spending close to 25 30 hours uh, on the PRC out of my own time. Uh, as you well know, it, you know it, it's an hour meeting you compensate for one hour two hours a month. But I think it's worthwhile. I think it's something that that, that the county uh, is benefiting by. The PRC is is a different animal uh, than most uh, uh, PRCs throughout the count uh, throughout the, the state. It's not a civil service commission. And any of you who are familiar, and I'm sure most of you are, because a lot of you have come from uh, municipal governments, uh, Mr. Chairman from Parma, um, are familiar with civil service systems are. The function of a civil service system as it relates to the PRC is a very small part of the PRC's function. Uh, the, the charter has, has given this directive to develop a system for merit and fitness, and it goes beyond just civil service protection. Uh, and we're committed, and everyone in the staff is committed uh, to accomplishing this goal. And I'd be remiss if I would say that, that, we don't ha that I am not impressed, because I am, with our staff. Our staff has worked tirelessly to accomplish its goals, and and I, I want to today publicly, and I will do that anytime I appear in front of in front of your group, to commend our staff and thank them for for, for their tireless efforts. And with this, I hope that uh, you, I can continue uh, as the, as on the commission, and I would uh, entertain any questions that you may have. All right. Any um, <clears throat> questions from the committee? Madam Chair. Councilman um, Germana. You, you mentioned that uh, you've, a, a new f firm has been retained, Gallagher. For, it's an outside consulting firm. Uh, correct. Uh, how, does that re how does that relate to the, the firm that went through the first time? That, the, the Archer. The, the Archer Staff. report. I, I'm not familiar with Archer because I wasn't uh, a part of the commission at the time. Uh, so I'm not sure what the Archer report did or, or how it was developed. Uh, the Gallagher report uh, specifically uh, went in to discuss uh, whether or not there was pay inequity within the county uh, and, 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 and made suggestions on how we should develop it. Uh, a very important part of that Gallagher report was the, uh, how it's affecting the morale of, of the employees. Uh, their impression was that the morale of the employees is being affected because they still believe it's business as usual from from before from when we had the three commissioner uh, set up here, and uh, they believe that there has to be changes made uh, uh, in the system and that it, and they have to be communicated uh, to the employees to to change that perception. Councilman Germana, the uh, Archer study was just a study to work on the classifications uh, that we had. Um, just purely it was focused on classifications. This is a more of a broader um, look for the ordinance of the pay, the actual pay equity ordinance to find out if there was some discrepancies. And uh, me and Councilman Miller attended the majority of those uh, focus groups that they had with the employees and, and I felt um, that it was a 
broad section of, of employees that came from all parts of the county in different levels uh, of employment and and consistently across the board, they were talking the same general things. And so me and Councilman Miller heard that. Councilman Miller, would you like to add to that? I would just add a little bit that the Archer studies were, uh, they were they were doing market studies. They, they were taking uh, different uh, positions and and looking at how those people are typically paid and, and uh, developing recommended target ranges that were equitable in, in, in comparison to the market and they created ranges and generally we uh, adjusted things so that people were at least within the recommended range although uh, it wasn't always consistent in, inside of the range so we, we made some progress and, and as the chairperson stated the uh, the Gallagher study was uh, was very structural in nature, and, and looking at at the overall system, at, at questions such as uh, as whether we should have uh, pay grades with eighteen steps along the way, or, or whether, as they recommend, we should uh, divide each pay grade into quartiles and and uh, and and simplify it structurally. So that, that's that's what the difference was. Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, you mentioned the morale, and um, I just was interested in knowing what the PRC's role and if there are any possible solutions on strategy with regards to improving that. Uh, yes, as I stated in my uh, opening statement and got lost, in it, is that what we want to do is uh, form a committee with council for implementation uh, of that study to uh, because it, it doesn't mean that every part of that study we have to implement, but we want to decide what parts should be implemented to improve the morale. And, and we'd like to do that in conjunction with council, okay? Um, and if the executive would like to be part of that committee also, because I, we think this is a countywide issue, not a, not a, not a issue that's, that's it's either PRC, council, or, or executive. Uh, one of the main parts of it was equal pay, deciding that they were getting paid properly as, as the person working right next to them. Because uh, sometimes there were supervisors getting paid less than the people underneath them. And, and and that became a very, and everyone knew what they're getting paid, so that became a very difficult thing. So it, the, the, the study concluded that we have to have a system developed that they, people think that they're being treated fairly. Now, not everyone's going to agree with that, but at least a system has to be developed. And, and they gave us some ideas about how to develop it, and we'd like to work with council and the executive to develop a system that we can implement. I want to go back to Councilman Germana. I don't know if you, you were finished. Were you finished, Councilman? Well, you know, the, I don't want the conversation to get away from the confirmation process. That's, that's but, okay. But at the core, yes, uh, happiness in, in an employment is dependent on being paid equitably. But Matt, um, as right. I was driving in from Parma this morning, I was listening to NPR and they're talking about the minimum wage and what Walmart's doing and so on and so forth. But really, it, it fundamentally comes down to we're doing the right thing in Cuyahoga County and you're getting paid for what you do. And uh, uh, so I think, I think it's a very important uh, thing. And, and when I'm out talking to uh, different organizations, uh, you know, I brag about the fact that these are new days. It's not the good old days, and and this pay equity for doing uh, what you're doing with your position and so on is is very important. So, and that's why we look forward to working with council and the executive to implement some parts of the Gallagher study that 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 everyone feels that will accomplish that purpose, council person. Councilman Miller, Madam Chair, to uh... To Mr. Cola Luca, I I would like to uh, congratulate you on being recommended for reappointment, and uh, and and also to say that uh, 
that I believe that, that the PRC has done an outstanding job on behalf of Cuyahoga County. Uh, you have experienced a lot of what they would, uh, in the private sector, refer to as integration risk, as, as you had to, uh, to work with what was previously several different offices that had, uh, had different pay systems and, and different levels of compensation and, and, uh, and had to move toward integrating them into a single system, and, and that's, uh, that's no easy task. And uh, I also commend you for the pay equity work. Uh, I, I've read the Gallagher study, and, and uh, I think they've done excellent work, and they've, they've identified uh, what the major challenges is and, uh, are, and, and I think the, uh, the key to success is, is going to be not to uh, take a few actions piecemeal in the short run, but rather to uh, develop a long-term strategy over a number of years to, uh, to implement uh, a pay system that's truly equitable. And, and, and I think the, uh, the study gives us a good... Uh, good guidepost as, as to, uh, to, how to how to go about doing that. Uh, there are two issues that I'd like to express some concern about and hope that you would keep them in mind. And, uh, and the first one is, uh, is regarding the pay audit process. Uh, I have... Uh, I have heard a number of concerns from constituents expressed about that process, and and I think the uh, the focus group results uh, confirm that that process is is uh, is not perceived as working, and 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 that uh, it's uh, it's. It's very very slow, and and uh, and when it's done. Uh, people often end up feeling that the re results really didn't reflect the work that they do. So, so I don't know whether it's uh, it's a problem of execution or whether it's partly a problem of perception. It's probably some kind of combination of those two. But I think the uh, I think the pay audit process receives needs some some further attention. Uh, the second point that I would raise is is that uh, is that there are some some conflicts out there between the uh, particularly between the administration and the PRC as to the uh, the exact scope and the boundaries of the authority of of the PRC in relation to other agencies and and uh, and uh, and I would just uh, ask for your very best efforts to try to work through those and resolve them in in uh, in a patient and and uh, an amicable manner so that we can uh, get get these questions resolved and and defined so that we have uh, a clear understanding and agreement as to uh, to exactly who does what. So, uh, so those are my concerns, and and uh, with, with that expressed, uh, I'm I'm prepared to uh, to vote for your reappointment and wish you the very best of success going forward. Thank you, Councilperson. Councilman um, Harrison. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, although I do not serve on the HR committee anymore, I wanted to come in support of uh, a District 10 rep resident 
Thomas Kolaluka, who resides in the village of Radnall. Um, it's such a joy to see a distinguished man like yourself uh, e even want to continue to serve on the PRC Commission. Uh, not only have you been a champion on uh, the commission, but he's he's truly been a champion in District 10 and Northeast Section. Tom has been a true asset to uh, the Collinwood, the Glenville, uh, the whole Northeast community. Uh, I've, I've known him for uh, some time now. And, and and truly believe that uh, his work, his talents on this commission would only prove to be great as we uh, continue along with this process. And so, Madam Chair and, and other committee members, I ask that you uh, please support uh, Mr. Cole Lucas' reappointment to the committee. And, he, uh, and I'm, I guarantee that he will continue to show us uh, uh, why he is the man for the job and, and why he was selected to serve as chair uh, to this point. Thank you. Thank you, Councilperson. Any further comments or questions? Sure. Councilman Miller. I just want to make one further comment that, uh, that I think to some extent it's a thankless job because I think you could develop the, uh, the absolutely perfect, totally equitable uh, system and there would still be people dissatisfied. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 the uh, the process of of uh, of figuring out uh, what someone's work is worth and how you measure performance and and and, and these kind of questions it, it's uh, it's just a personal th such a personal thing and it gets into uh, so many questions about what kind of talents are really needed and valued, and it, and there's just so many opinions, and so uh, so I just uh, I just appre appreciate your willingness to to take this on, knowing that uh, that no matter uh, no matter how well you do it, there's still going to be criticism out there. Councilman Germana. You're ready for a motion? <laughs> yes, I am. I move that we uh, send this on to the full council under second reading suspension. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Well, thank you, Mr. Uh, Koaluka, and look forward to working with you. I do want to say in moving forward uh, in the future um, with reappointments for the PRC Commission, uh, me as well as... Uh, County Council staff will work on providing a system for if there's someone that steps down for sure. some reasons. Because we've we've had that recently, one for yes. moving out of the county, and uh, so we do commend you again for stepping up to the plate and con wanting to continue because this is we've done. I kind of say that looking at the we've done the easy part. Now we have the hard part of ma making sure that we really focus on this pay equity study and bringing some kind of That'd be great. fairness or equity to the employees that are suffering right now. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate uh, and all the comments from everybody. And again, I want to compliment our staff uh, who's really did the yeoman's work on, or the yo person work on, 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 on these issues. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next item, please. Ordinance 2015-0007, an ordinance amending section 208.01 of the Cuyahoga County Code to reduce from 15 to 9 the number of members serving on the Citizens Advisory Council on Equity. Thank you. <clears throat> the county's equity plan, including the establishment of the Citizens Advisory Council on Equity, uh, was originally enacted pursuant to ordinance number uh, 0014 and it's tasked with providing recommendations and input to the county executive and county council regarding the development of equity goals, strategies, and programs of Cuyahoga County. Uh, as uh, our clerk stated, originally there was 15 members uh, tasked in that ordinance, and it's been difficult to find 15 citizens to fulfill this advisory committee. Um, so therefore, it is being suggested to go to a smaller number of nine members. I don't think that was the only um, issue. Um, it is primarily one, but it wasn't the only issue. The other issue is um, we didn't get out and really promote 
uh, from the executive side or the county council side fully um, in regards to the citizen advisory council and what we really wanted to um, progress, the level we wanted to progress to. Um, so is there any comments from my, um, from the committee members in regards to um, this change of ordinance? Councilman Miller. My comment is that uh, as you stated, uh, it really wasn't given the pri priority attention that it deserved, and, and I think that's, that's part of the reason. But also, uh, 15 is more than enough, and, and uh, 9 is easily sufficient to have a very good commission. And, and so I think uh, a combination of, of uh, reducing the size to 9 and, uh, and, and a little better uh, uh, effort on, on getting the word out, hopefully with the help of the new administration, will... Uh, We'll get this up and running relatively soon, and so I support the legislation. Councilman Germana. Thank you, Madam Chair. You know, I'm just wondering, <laughs> and since this is open discussion, uh, I'm just wondering if uh, a little added emphasis to being on this advisory council if if we had the number at 11 and every council district would have a representative so then the council members would be out there promoting it and recommending people uh, people would apply to the council member and then the council member would figure out you know what who, who should serve and so on and so it's kind of in between the 15 and the 9 and it, it gives uh, gives each council member some uh, how do you want to say uh, some participation in, 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 in this important task so what do you think about that I think it's a a good suggestion. Um, council members are all along had opportunity to um, go to their districts and and push this as well as it was. Uh, Jim Boyle, I believe, was uh, assigned to the task, but Jim, as many of uh, the executive staff, had dual dual jobs and had a lot on their plate. So you had to, you know, we all know we have to prioritize in our life and. Sometimes things get pushed back that seems least um, least important um, to some. You know, I don't have any issue um, with that with that number being changed, but I, I think the reason that we went down to nine is because it you know it has been hard to get eleven individuals, and this will be the original. Uh, Citizen Advisory Council, which means they will be tasked with setting up meeting times and when they want to meet for, you know, it to continue. Um, we talk about equity in this county, and, you know, I hear it throughout my district. So it just amazes me that individuals, you know, and we do have some that are sitting, I've had to call, recall them and say, are you still, you know, hold on, I know you still are, in, are you still interested? And they are. Um, so this really amazes me that people didn't jump on this opportunity, especially with um, the new administration, um, new government going forward. So, you know, I'm open to suggestions, but I kind of, you know, I had talked to a few people in regards to the number to come up with a, a fair number. And I don't have any problems if, you know, if it's, Two from Westlake, you know, two. So we want to chime in. Anybody else want to chime in on that? I, Councilwoman. I, I tend to uh, lean in agreement with uh, Councilman Germana 
Uh, and with me being the newest member, this was, you know, the first time I had an opportunity to um, familiarize myself with this particular ordinance and would um, appreciate the opportunity to solicit, you know, um, members, com constituents in my district to see if they would like to participate because we get a lot of feedback um, from various municipalities. And I think we, at the very least, could find one person in our community that would be willing to um, serve on this committee. And I'm not sure what efforts were led, but it sounds like it wasn't a, a high priority for us. And um, given that we've established a little bit of a foundation now, maybe we can give this a little bit more attention to ensure that the um, that the constituents of Cuyahoga County are uh, given an equal opportunity to serve on this equity committee. I mean, it's kind of, I, I think that I, I would like to see um, one from each district personally. Again, I'm not sure how we solicited previously, but um, I certainly would be willing to reach out to all of my mayors as well as, um, you know, community, uh, community groups to see if we could find someone that would be willing to serve. Councilman Miller. <laughs> I do not have a strong opinion on the, on the question of whether it's 9 or 11. Uh, but uh, what I would suggest is that uh, I don't think we should have a hard and fast rule that there be one per district. Uh, this, is, uh, this is an equity commission, and... and uh, and the di distribution of people qualified and and uh, and 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 best able to uh, to work on equity issues might not be equally distributed by district, and and so uh, so as a minimum, I would I would suggest that the. Uh, that the notion of one per district be uh, be informal rather than uh, specified, and and that uh, that everybody on council could uh, could reach out and see uh, see uh, who they come up with, but there there might be uh, some districts where the council person doesn't really come up with anybody, and there might be other other districts where the council person comes up with with two or three that are really well qualified and 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 we would want to we would want to have the flexibility to uh, to take advantage of those differences well stated and and to um councilwoman brown and uh, councilman germana ever since this has moved forward i mean i believe Trying to think, was it 2012 that it finally got passed? Mm. Um, we it was, it was a document that we worked on since the beginning of uh, inception um, with uh, Councilman Miller and and myself uh, pushing for it um, to be able to even be brought to council. Uh, so we've had long strides and um, in talking about this. And so, I mean, the number is just a formality. So what I'm basically trying to say is it's always been open for any council member to solicit, you know, the administration. So that's that point is very well taken, but it's it's always been open and we and we want that. We that would just be ideal to have one representative from uh every district, but it's not going to necessarily make that council person bring somebody I mean they've had the opportunity we've talked about this uh, several several times about pushing it's it, it has not been established yet and so we're, we're trying to get it off the ground um, uh, I'm trying to think I uh, what is the name of the group I went to a woman's group uh, Sharon Cole yeah, no. talked about it I've went out to different parts of my district and 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 talked about it. <laughs> Madam Chair. Yes. Councilman. Since we're sitting around here thinking outside the box, I'd like to put a, an off the wall suggestion out there, which is that we uh, 
we change where it says 15 members, change it to 9 to 15, so that, that it's, uh, it's not fixed by ordinance. And, and if uh, we, uh, we start with nine so that we get, can get started, but if, if, uh, if once we get started, some, uh, some additional people come forward that are very interested that, that, the, uh, that the commission would have the option of, of increasing its membership up to 15. So I just put that out there as, as, uh, as another possibility. Well, that's a, that's a, how do you feel about that, Councilman Germana? It, it leaves the, um, it doesn't tie us to say we can't start till 15. It gives us the option if we get nine and if it wants to expand uh, to every, every representative wants to make sure that they have a member from their district to, uh, to share it, uh, that, uh, that would allow that. I mean, this is not no hard, fast rule, but basically we want to lower it so we can really push and, and get it started. Mr. King, is there any problem with that suggestion? I don't think so. I know staff has worked hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, no, as, as far as I as as I'm concerned, I don't I don't see any issue with with that suggestion. Obviously, this is an advisory council, so um, you know it, it it is built around consensus. So um, I think in in terms of the membership, it's entirely at the discretion of of council. Would that pose a problem if it came to voting on something? I don't, you know I don't they haven't started their bylaws or anything like that, so I don't know if that would pose as a Sure, I, I would imagine you know, it, assuming assuming they did have that uh, sort of range of membership, their bylaws would likely need to be written to account for that. But generally speaking, in terms of how they would um, make recommendations or adopt resolutions, um, it would be based on whatever bylaws they adopted. And if it's a simple majority of um, the those present at a meeting or the quorum of of, of the body, um, they would need to establish obviously what constitutes a quorum. Um, for a particular body, but if there are only nine appointed members, then a quorum would be five, um, and if there were 15, then it would be more. So uh, there would need to be some adjustments made, but I don't think it would cause um, significant operational uh, hurdles. Sorry. Yeah, quorum. A yeah, quorum is typically defined by the body itself. It can de it can determine what constitutes a quorum, whether it be a simple majority of the members. Uh, it usually has to be at least a simple majority, but or two thirds. Um, is, but that's generally up to the body itself. It could adopt as part of its bylaws. Thank you. Thank you. So where do we fit? I feel you know I'm not hard fast set on nine members, I'm willing to listen to everybody. I think Councilman Miller came up with a good suggestion to accompany everybody's uh, suggestions. What do you think? Should we amend this legislation to have a range from nine to fifteen? Madam Chair, the more I, I think about it, uh, even though it's my idea, I, I kind of like the idea of having at least one member from every council district. And again, this is just advisory. Um, this, this is not going to involve anybody actually making um, making rules and I think uh, <clears throat> it's engaging in community outreach and public participation um, 
And that's just another person from every district that's out there uh, exposing how the, the good things that we're doing in this this, this county as to equity. Um, and quite frankly, I just never really got involved with even considering uh, asking someone because I wasn't asked to. <laughs> Um, uh, so, you know, maybe what we should do is go to, uh, the members of, of, of council and, and see if they like the idea of, of having representation, um, from each councilman. Madam Chair. Council member. Let me raise a practical question. And maybe this is, uh, this is a question for, for councilman Germana. And the, uh, if you if you look at the uh, the current language, it says the county executive and the council shall use good faith efforts to reflect the diversity of the people in the county in appointing the members of the Citizens Equity Council on Equity. If if you consider the history, the uh, uh, before this was adopted, the uh, the earlier drafts ha had language that, that said things like that there would be uh, be at least two representing the African American community and at least uh, one representing the Hispanic community and one representing the Asian American community and one representing the L LGBT community and the disabled community and and there was there was an effort to ensure that it uh, it broadly reflected the different constituencies and and uh, and on on further discussion, we uh, we felt that that was uh, a little bit too too prescriptive and 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 constraining. But we substituted this uh, this good faith efforts language, and and uh, and my question is: presuming we think that that kind of broad representation is a good thing, which I do. Uh, the question is, uh, is if each council member is independently uh, recruiting one person from their district, how do we ensure that, that the total membership ends up presenting this kind of broad diversity that we're looking for? Very good suggestion or comment. Uh, I'm at the mindset to... Uh, just uh, amend the legislation for the range of 9 to 15 so it doesn't lock us in, um, but not changing any language as far as suggesting that um, county council have to, have to pick um, one member from their district, uh, leaving that informal um, because that, that has always been the suggestion. You know, this is not just who uh, the sponsor or co-sponsors of the legislation to work on it by itself. It's council as a whole. We all voted on it to all participate in making sure that this this Citizens Advisory Council got up and, uh, up and running. So uh, I'm willing to uh, amend the legislation for 9 to 15 um, so we can be able to get it started. We do have like I said, citizens out there that wanted to start from the beginning. There just wasn't enough members, so we don't want to stagnate anything. Madam Chair. Councilman Miller. Uh, I think that's good, but I think the... Uh, I think the council nomination process is, is a good suggestion and, and, uh, and should definitely informally be retained. But I think it it should be uh, a process where the council member doesn't uh, doesn't get to decide on their own, but that the uh, the council member uh, nominates them to the executive 
and and uh, and the executive gets to look at at the field of applicants and, and and has some capability to try to ensure the broad representation that we're looking for. I'm not totally happy with that suggestion. Um, I know what you're getting at, but I'm just trying not to hold up this process, oh, I, you know, any longer than it than it is. Mm -hmm. It has always been stated in this, you know, this is the first time this ordinance has been asked to be amended in any way. It is always fully suggested that any resident, as long as they live in within Cuyahoga County, could apply. Uh, I believe it's on the link on the boards and commissions link could apply for this. The administration as well as county council, if they wanted to suggest or reach out and talk, I've talked to maybe about four groups, individual groups in regarding um, this this citizens advisory uh, council. And so it's always been open to say anybody could suggest a, a, a member or to apply for this position. The problem is we've never gotten enough applicants to even have a suggestion if someone didn't get nominated or anything. So right now, that should be the primary focus. With any legislation, we can always amend it. You know, once we do a full court press um, with the new administration going forward and with us as well to really start speaking at our meetings about this and who would want to be on if that ever became a problem that, you know, we saw, like we did with the, I want to say the Charter Review Commission, where it was just an abundance of East Side mm -hmm. residents and, and so, West Side wasn't, you know, then we could amend it at that, at that point. Madam Chair. Councilman. Uh, I'm not suggesting, uh, I'm not suggesting amend, amended language other than 9 to 15. What, what I'm suggesting is that uh, that once we put this in place that that we uh, we spe specifically reach out to each of the council members uh, encourage them to uh, uh, think about who in their district they would want to uh, to encourage to apply and and uh, give them a pretty tight time frame so that this uh, can move forward and and that the uh, the council nominations would not be the only source of nominations. You know, who, wh whatever, uh, whoever comes forward from from whatever the administration uh, 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 does would also be very much part of the process. And 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 that that uh, uh, I think if a uh, a decent number of uh, of nominations come through the work of the council members that would help ensure geographic diversity, which should be one of the goals along with others. And, and but it, it would be, uh, it would be a part of the process, but not be the process. Um, and moving forward, Mike, I was wondering, could you, um, we could possibly look at the boards and commissions descriptions on on online and see exactly what it says and maybe incorporate um, some of that language that Councilman Miller just suggested. Uh, it's just like a broad statement of the Citizens Advisory Committee, so I can't really think of what it says right now, but maybe we'll take a look at that. You're referring to the website? Yeah. Yeah, we it's, can work with, that's actually maintained by uh, the administration, but we can uh, reach out. Um, and and, see and make if sure a way some to... of that language is in there that sure um, and that that might help. Also, um, I'm ready to make a motion to amend this. Uh, not a, uh, yes, amend this language in the ordinance from the range nine to fifteen. Uh, is there a second? Second. Um, before we vote on the amendment. I do want to make a suggestion is that we're going to do, and you know, my 
my rule of thumb is if we can stay with three readings for an ordinance, we should have three readings. And I welcome uh, Councilman uh, Germana at Tuesday's meeting to, you know, when this comes across the agenda. Oh, what is that? He'll be in Costa Rica. You'll be in Costa Rica? <laughs> I'm going to be examining equity. Oh. It's a business trip for those that are listening. I think so. that uh, I think one of one of your colleagues can bring forward the suggestion right. that if everybody were to get involved in 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 trying to encourage one or a couple of people from their district to apply, that it would help us get this off the ground. Okay, so I, I think that's a fair suggestion. So. Um, this this will be uh, will pass Tuesday night should be uh, second reading. Um, so we have three readings on this and all suggestions should get fully in. So can we have a vote that we are uh, amending this uh, legislation? Uh, it's going for third reading to reflect nine to the range of nine to 15 members or citizens appointed. It's going to go three readings. Ordinances, we usually try to have it go three readings. And since we've had some um, some good suggestions here today, we and Mike is not not here. Um, we'll have more members to uh, chime in on this, and, and that way the process can still keep moving. We're not stagnated. We are moving the legislation forward, but we'll. By the time we get to third reading, which will probably be at the end of March, we'll have a nice piece of document. So all in favor of 9 to 15 range, say aye. 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 All right. I thought that was going to be a slam dunk mm -hmm. <laughs> piece of legislation. but So, Mike, uh, we will work on looking at the website, seeing if we could uh, possibly change some of that suggestion as we hear the council members discuss this hopefully and I want to just say if you can make sure that Joe will bring that to Councilman Brady's attention President Brady's attention so he'll know that it might ensue um, some dialogue and I know he wants to be uh, kept up on that kind of stuff All right uh, is there anyone signed in for public comment Madam, Madam. Councilman Miller Having, having approved the amendment, I would like to make a motion to refer 2015-0007 to the full council for, for second reading, not suspension. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any miscellaneous business? Any other comments? All right. Chrissy, how is he treating you? <laughs> Good. All right. Uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you.